Let's bring back joy and playfulness to life. What makes us human is that we have emotions, still. If we don't start to take it that serious, we maybe soon not have any at all. We start off life using all our senses for the purpose of finding out what's going on, who are we, and what are the issues. Vision is the sense that primarily dominates how we understand the world. By only using vision, we are missing out quite essential information. Not only are we missing out, but we are also cleaning and sanitizing the world that surrounds us. To such an extent, it's not any more healthy for the body, the surrounding, or the planet. We live in multiple realities. The invisible reality, the real reality, seem to be forgotten. These particles are providing information beyond any other type of information. We breathe up to 24,000 times a day. We move 12,7 cubic meter air with our breathing. That breathing is essential to being alive. We have no prejudices towards smell. We are born neutral. Humans, cockroaches, and rats are the biggest generalists on planet Earth. The purpose of the nose is to find food and partner. Don't forget next time you put a perfume on your skin. The brain is a very sophisticated device. If you feed it with different type of information, it's adapted and to make sense out of it. I started a journey in 1995, trying to use my interface nose for the purpose of understanding the world. Literally exploring the world as a dog. And this is the world map so far in my lab. These are projects I've been doing over the last 20 years. And there's a whole planet and a whole earth and ocean to smell, so my job is not completed yet. What are the issues I'm looking into? The list is long. I decided not to focus on doing organic chemistry in my lab, but being out in the field is how I do it. Showing up is half my job. So here I am in the ocean, putting myself at risk with my devices, collecting invisible information for the purpose to understand the world beyond the way it looks. And the issues are many and the topics are intense. What I do with all that information, this is the data I've been collecting, the molecules that I've been scanning, these are the identification of those molecules, and this is my lab in Berlin, consisting of 6,000 molecules that already have been used for generation to be placed in abstract slurries in all type of bad looking containers. So in 2004, I decided to want to change this. I started to collaborate with one of the biggest corporations in the world that have been doing all their work very well, well for far too long to look into if we can also do the opposite. Literally show what's going on there before we decide to cover it up. So since some of the topics are here through the next slides, this is about preservation and amplification of history in India. This is in Cochin, in Kerala. This is about fear and tolerance towards the other. The wall is embedded with smell molecules. So you have to interact with the wall to understand who is a person. Rather than just looking at a person, the smell provides information that trigger your emotion at the quickest time of any kind of sense processing. Trigger emotion, I think, is essential. Learning in the context of emotion is essential to mankind. And this happened the first period of life, from zero to 13. I think it's important to bring back this experience back to what we do. Joy and playfulness and emotion is essential to moving on. Navigation, also on technology, we can use to navigate, understanding the surrounding, mapping the city on behalf of how it smells, trying to communicate this in a dictionary I've been doing for 20 years, consisting of 3,000 terminologies around how to communicate smell beyond hedonic, meaning it smells good, it smells bad. Language is essential to understand smell. Functional smell is a big issue. This is a molecule that defends you, attracts you, and makes you have, get more attention. This is an object you can place a molecule inside. This is a singular molecule, 
we've been testing have a specific function. This is self-defense, a project I'm working on in India, sexual harassment. You put this little jewelry and you scare the whoever tried to attack you. Smell and memory is very essential. We we'll learn in the context of a smell, you'll never forget it. This experience stay with you till you die. And whenever you smell it again later in life, you hardly recognize it because it's already in your subconsciousness. So today you will have a card get made for you for to remember this conference. This postcard is made specifically for this conference. A big project I did in Australia a couple of years ago, where I looked into the history of the indigenous, a very, just very devastating topics. And could a smell artifact be a new way to understand these issues? So we did a lot of uh, trying to get segments of the, ear, the, the earth, collected smell molecule from different rituals performed by, for me, for, for, for the indigenous. And with the results, I embedded the smell with a nanotechnology in objects on this wall. And this is the National Gallery Victoria in Melbourne. So the only way you could understand these objects is by interacting with them, by using your touch and your breathing, you suddenly got the narratives which then came out of the surface of these objects. Another project I'm working on in Detroit for the Ford Foundation is how to place life and living uh, experiences into an artifact of the future. So these objects are 3D printed. The smell molecule structure determines the shape of the objects. You take it off the shelf, you interact with objects, and you smell different aspects of life in the streets of Detroit. So these objects, again, placed in a context, let's say a museum, you are finally allowed to interact with artifacts. Normally these artifacts are placed behind glass and you have no access to it whatsoever, meaning you have no access to having the experience of what this smell, what this object potentially could tell you. This is the newest project I've been working on for a year or two. Uh, collaborating, is, I think the collaboration is the new competition. So this is a collaboration between Ginkgo Biotech, Christine Agapakis and Daisy Ginsberg. We sequenced the DNA from extinct plants at Harvard Herbarium and were able to detect molecules of these plants, which I then replicated um, as close up to the findings as possible. In total, we have three plants and two of them are now on display at Santo Pompidou and then Broken Nature in Milano. So collaboration, I think, is essential to getting things done. And these are some of the displays. And this is a smell memory kit that I developed last year, which look into the issue of memory in a very holistic way. Literally playing homage to memory. So if you have a moment, you don't want to snap it away always with your smartphone. We're snapping away reality, we're snapping away our life. We don't even know where we have been and who we were with. So in this case, you can give that moment an abstract smell code, which is also what you have on the postcard that you got just now. This code will remind you of this conference for the rest of your life. So please don't throw it away. Send it to yourself, and when you come home, you're like, ah, yes, Singapore, yes, wow, <laughs> fortune, wallpaper, unforgettable. So this is a very efficient way to remember an important moment of your life. So here I have a database, 1,500 molecules, what is essential here is that those molecules are abstract because if you smell like an apple or a lemon or you name it, I say it, you already have the association. So it really look into neuroscience and understand the first moment is essential. So the first moment you smell the smell today is today. So the content code you add to it will stay with that smell forever. Like gas, gas don't have a smell. In 1826, 
three molecules was placed on the top of gas to make it identifiable so that whenever the gas was leaking, you could smell it. The principle behind this coding is exactly the same. So not only am I simulating, replicating smell from the real reality for various purposes, but I'm also looking into chemistry, so chemical compounds, smell molecules for functional purposes. And we have a lot of measuring and, and, and testing, testing um, equipment, biofeedback, MRI, fMRI, EKG, to see that these molecules actually have evidence. I invest a lot of money and time into education. If I want to place my knowledge somewhere, I have to place it in the future. The children is the future. So here I go on my journeys. The first on my agenda is children. Here is workshops on chemistry. What does it mean? What does a smell mean? A smell is a complex thing. More than one molecule, we are surrounded by trillions of molecules and we breathe them. And making that fact accessible for children is essential to also understanding what I do in the end of the day. So these kids are learning what it means to have senses. And most of them have no clue. They call it they're born literally that activate their sense of looking most more than anything else very early. This is kids with disability and smelling for the first time activate their emotion. And it's without doubt that this slide to the right is a smell of sewage. So maybe next time we speak about the devastating things that are happening to our surrounding, in this case, the ocean, maybe we need toys for children in the kindergarten to play with the smell of the issues in the ocean in a playful way, add back a different type of rhetoric towards the issues that surround us and different type of biases to understand the world we live in in an appropriate way, holistic way, using our emotion is what I try to do with my work. Thank you very much.